Now for the question. <laughs> the question that impacts, I don't know, should we even bother asking any other questions about Catholicism? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Here to talk to us about that, Professor of Theology at the Augustine Institute, Michael Barber. So the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, is this just wishful thinking? Is it something where, you know, the apostles hid the body, uh, but then, you know, he rose in our hearts, and that's a really nice idea. Or did this really, actually, really, 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 really happen? Right, this is ground zero. Mm -hmm. St. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, his first letter to the Corinthians, that if Christ has not been raised from the dead, he said, you're still in your sins. He says, your faith is in vain. He says, and we are the most pitiable of all men. We're the most pathetic of all human, uh, of human beings because we have been suckered yeah. into a lie. Yeah, here right? he is, you know, sitting in jail writing some of these letters and like, you know. That's right. He'd be the ultimate loser if this didn't actually happen. Right, and this is uncomfortable for people <laughs> yeah. because yeah. some people want to say, well, I'm a reasonable person, I'm not superstitious. But when it comes to the resurrection, some people balk at that and say, well, no, I mean, Maybe he just rose in a spiritual way. They remembered him, like you said, or something to that effect. We really can't dodge this question. This is what it's all about. So people have come up with different alternatives, right? So one alternative is that Jesus actually didn't die, that he was buried, but he was unconscious. Mm -hmm. And what happens called the swoon theory. The swoon theory. That is that Jesus didn't really die, that in the tomb he was just unconscious and he woke up. This is entirely impossible because the Romans were expert torturers and executioners, <laughs> yeah. right? They knew when you were dead. Exactly. In fact, we yeah. know that a lot of people didn't make it to crucifixion because yeah. the scourging that came before it was so brutal. Oh. So to imagine that they were just mistaken and they yeah. allowed him to be taken down from the cross. He's mostly dead. Mostly dead, <laughs> exactly. And to imagine that scenario just doesn't hold a lot of water and most people virtually all scholars just reject it. I, I, I can't think of a serious scholar who accepts no, it. No. Another theory is that, well, maybe the apostles stole the body. There's some grand conspiracy theory, okay. right? And actually, there's a little bit of evidence for this because in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that this was the story that the soldiers told, right? Okay. That, that okay. someone stole Jesus' body uh, in the middle of the night. Of course, that doesn't make any sense. How did the Romans know who stole the body if they were asleep? Right? That yeah, didn't really yeah. Work too well yeah, either. Right. <laughs> um, so there are really good reasons, though, when you look and at. And why the, would they have really stolen the body? Well, yeah. so the idea is well, then they could convince people of the resurrection, but this would have, of course, entailed a major about turn for them because we know historically none of the apostles were crucified with Jesus. They all yeah. went into hiding. They were all terrified, yeah, yeah. right? What would the motivation be, right? They could have gone back and had a comfortable life fishing right. on the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful place. Right. Uh, instead, I'm going to pretend he rose so I can go be martyred. Right. And the amazing thing is, it seems that they all suffered greatly. Yeah. And so you would even expect if they'd made up the story, you, you would expect to have some record of them recanting at some point. Yeah. I mean, at yeah. least even if it was true, just out of fear of the torture, right? right? So, I mean, to me, this is a real powerful sign that they did receive the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit because they were able to be courageous in the face of torture and death, right? Mm -hmm. But when you read the gospel stories, which really, what really gets me, and there have been many people who have approached the gospels as a skeptic and said, oh, well, this story obviously this isn't true, I'm gonna break it wide yeah, open, yeah. right? And then who came to faith after ex examining the evidence, I think of Craig Keener, who was an atheist, who is now a, a, a famous Christian biblical scholar, great yeah. biblical scholar, in fact. I mean, when you look at the stories in the Gospels of Easter Sunday, they don't look like stories you'd make up. So one mm -hmm. of my favorite examples mm -hmm. of this is, remember the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Yeah. They're with Jesus on the whole road and they don't recognize him. Yeah. And there are other stories that when they saw Jesus, they didn't, they didn't recognize him at first. Okay, now let's think through this. If you're gonna make up a conspiracy well, and you're gonna tell people, good. right, and you're gonna tell people, Jesus really did rise from the dead and I saw him. Yeah, yeah. The next line isn't, 
but he didn't look like Jesus, right? <laughs> like, if I wanted to convince you that Elvis was still alive, that he wasn't dead, I wouldn't say, no, really, I saw him. He didn't look anything like <laughs> Elvis. He was sort of thin with blonde hair. Yeah. I wouldn't say something yeah, like yeah. that. I'd want to convince you that I actually saw him, right? Yeah. So the yeah. fact that the Gospels repeatedly tell us that they didn't recognize Jesus at first, we don't know exactly yeah. how to explain it, but at the end of the day, it doesn't have yeah. the sound yeah, of like a made-up story. Like that right? yeah. Another detail people have pointed out is that the first witnesses to the resurrection are women. Mm. And in the ancient world, women were often, not always, some people overplay this, but women were not often seen as credible witnesses. Mm. Sometimes they were. But if you were going to make up a story, you wouldn't make up this story. Yeah. Right? Yep. So that's another really powerful, so there are two major elements. They don't recognize who he is. The first witnesses are women. You don't expect those details in a made up story. When we think of the resurrection, one of the key passages that comes to mind is Jesus' prediction of his resurrection. He announces it's coming by referring to the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah. Yeah, now Jonah was an Old Testament prophet, mm -hmm. right? And uh, there's a great story in the Old Testament about Jonah who is called to go to Nineveh, which was the enemy of the people of Israel, and announced that in 40 days, Nineveh would be destroyed if they don't repent. Mm. Right? And Jonah refuses. He tries to go the other direction. You probably know the story. A giant whale yep. uh, swallows him up and then spits him back out on the shore near Nineveh. And he goes to Nineveh and he, and he preaches sort of reluctantly. Well, you know, 40 days, so he's going to be destroyed. And amazingly, the Ninevites hear the message and they convert. Mm. They repent of their sins mm. and they turn to the Lord, right? It's a truly remarkable story. Yeah. Well, when Jesus refers to the sign of Jonah, he's doing two things. First, he's pointing to his ultimate resurrection, like Jonah who swallowed by a whale and three days later, spit out and- Coming back from the dead. Right? Then so too Jesus will die and three days later be raised from the dead. But there's another component to that, yeah. right? It's not just the resurrection. Jesus' resurrection wasn't for his own sake. Jesus rose from the dead for our sake so that we might believe and so that he could send the disciples out with the message of God's salvation, not just for Israel, but for all the world. And that's the amazing thing here, is that that is what happens. That the disciples go out and they proclaim to Gentiles, not to Israelites. Now, we gotta understand how weird this is, because in the ancient world, people's had their own gods. Every nation had their yeah, own gods, yeah. right? Yeah, we can't relate with that. Like, and we you know, can't really relate to Canada them. has their own god and Mexico has their own god. Exactly, you know, right. right. And it was a, a matter of, you know, sort of civic pride. My god's better right. than your yeah, god, right? Yeah. So for a nation, for a peoples to accept the god of Israel is really remarkable. They, they, they had to have some That's pretty radical. convincing evidence, right? Yeah. How many Hittites do you know? Zero. Probably not many. <laughs> Probably don't know many Philistines. One or two. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, all of these had their own gods, the Babylonians, the Assyrians. If you were to go back in the ancient world and, and tell people, well, one day one of these people's gods will be worshipped from the Middle East all the way to California, all the way to Hawaii, they would have looked at you and said, well, okay, it's got to be the Babylonians. Yeah, then they'll yeah. conquer the world or the Romans. And through conquering, they presume it's because the whole With world became that nation. Exactly. Right with the sword. Yep. But what happens is it's the God of Israel who all nations begin to worship. And that, my friend, is a miracle. My and that is part of the sign of Jonah for people like St. Ambrose, who was Augustine's teacher, mm. or Eusebius, early Christian writer. One of the proofs of the resurrection is that, in fact, the sign of Jonah became true because the Ninevites, that is all the Gentiles, repent and they turn to the God of Israel. So here we are in Denver on the other side of the world from where ancient Israel was and we're talking about the God of Israel? You, yeah. you don't have any Jewish blood, Makes no sense. Oh, I it's don't. True. We're, we're as yeah. Gentile as they come. Yeah. And yet we have come to believe that the God of Israel is the God of the Lord Jesus who has risen from the dead for the salvation of the world. You know, you'll find people throughout history who will die for things that they believe. You won't find people who die for an eyewitness testimony unless that testimony is true. With the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we have a story that people wouldn't have made up that they laid their lives down for. Jesus is really, really risen from the dead.
And that means that the final word in every situation in your life, no matter what darkness you face, no matter what death you have to go through, the final word is, He is risen. This is the best news ever.